What's up? I'm waiting for Emilio to hop on. What's up? What's up, Emiliano? Fortnite squad member. Emilio, I see you. I see you, my brother. I'm adding you. What's up? What's good? What's going on? Where you at? Uh, right now, I'm somewhere in fucking Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, what are you doing? I'm um, actually, I'm editing. I'm Ooh. in New York. I'm, I'm in uh, Williamsburg. Oh, shit. Yep. Yeah, I've been trying to get, I, I was supposed to be back in New York uh, today, actually. Bye. Yeah, I know. But um, what ended up happening was all the rain and shit. It got too crazy. I had to take a break. I was getting exhausted from driving. I started off in Oma, dude. Where are you in a hotel or a motel or some shit? Uh, I don't know where the fuck I'm at right now. Hold on. What is this? The Marriott Bonvoy. Ooh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm is anybody in the hotel because of this shit? Is it is is there people? Or are you guys the only ones in there? No, it's just uh, I mean, I saw like maybe two or three cars. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. There's nobody. Like all the parking lots are they they're completely empty. I mean, it is. Yeah, there's maybe three or four cars. That's pretty much it. I'm sure that's like staff members. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. No shit. Mm-hmm. No shit, bro. Yeah, I just drove, you know, from from Chicago back over here to New York, and you probably saw the same shit when you were going out the other way. All those apocalyptic signs on the side of the highways that say, cover your mask in public, and like, wash your hands, and all this shit all along the fucking highway going, going across the country. It's, it's pretty wild, man. Yeah, forget that fucking saying. It, there's like a famous one that I've been seeing, something about the six feet away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what the fuck was it? Do you remember what it was? The, the coronavirus shit that says like six feet away or something like that? Yeah, I know that, but it says like, it's something like, oh yeah, something, 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 say six feet away. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was funny when I first saw it, but I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Oh shit. Well, so... I want to thank you for being in our film, for being one of the, the you kind of put, you play one of the gangsters, you know, but like, uh, it's not like exaggerated or anything. You just kind of showed up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was and, um, right. <laughs> and, uh, you were, and, and we're going to tie this together, but like, I know you from your restaurant, you know, in New York on Houston. Um, and hey, Emilio's Bellato, is that the, the the name, the actual name? Yeah, it's Emilio's Bellato. Yeah. And so then when we were casting the, the, the gangster roles, you know, some people that you play opposite to are like John Magaro, Shiloh Fernandez, our lead, Val Kilmer, the lead, uh, the, the lead cr crime boss, uh, Vinnie Pastore, um, D'Onofrio, Joseph D'Onofrio. There's a lot of people. It was a huge family, a whole whole gang there. And um, you were great. You were fucking awesome, man. You're awesome. And I, I know, you know, I've always known you're, I know you're an actor, you know, I know you work and you run the fucking restaurant. I know you do so much shit, you know. Um, but some people we, we, we called on and we hired, you know, because we hired friends too, you know, friends and people that we know are talented we all over the film and then we also hired through casting and like different sort of stuff but yeah. um you know and then when you hire kind of like friends and people you just fuck with it's always it's always tricky when they show up and they're not good but you're fucking great and you actually pull off i'm not gonna say anything, but you pull off an amazing stunt oh yeah we had to do this we had to do this scene and i don't want to say too much but we had to do this scene and it was actually a really elaborate scene with stunts and it it takes so much time so then we were like this is gonna we don't have enough time we have to cut it out unless we do it in the one shot 
And then we can do everything at once. We can rehearse it a few times and, and we did it and you fucking landed it. And you're like the cherry on top of that thing. And I remember after we shot this huge stunt shot, everybody, the whole place just kind of erupted, you know, it was fucking great. It was yeah, great. That was all Patty, Patty was, um, you know, the original guy that wanted to do it. He was like, I don't feel comfortable with doing it. And then, you know, Pat's like, are you fucking kidding me? We got to get this shit done, man. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'll do it. And then I was like, you know what I'll do? It. He's like, are you sure? Are you sure you think you could do it? He kept on rehearsing with me constantly. I'm like, dude, calm down. Now you're fucking making me nervous. Like, yeah, yeah. Thing so so oh. pa Patrick's the stunt coordinator. What's his last name? Uh, Walsh. Pat, Patrick, Pat Walsh, yeah. He's great. He's he's extremely talented. Yeah, Murphy. he finished with a film. The dude was amazing. During all this fucking shit, I'm like, what the fuck, man? I know. How was he able to do that shit? I couldn't believe it. He got it done, apparently. I can't wait to see the footage. He's like, when you get back to New York, I'm going to start cutting shit up, and I, I want your opinion. So I'm like, oh, wow. You know, I look forward to, you know, seeing that stuff. We'll see what the hell he came out with. Yeah, he's a fucking cowboy. Yeah. I forget where the fuck he was. Maybe Wyoming or some shit like that. Yeah. Mm. It's dangerous, man, because you can, get fu you can get sick, you know, but. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole reason I'm, I'm, I'm over here on the South is because I was sick for a while. You know, like we were talking and I was like, holy shit, man, I've never felt like this before. And I tried to book an appointment to be seen, and they were like, "Unless you're dying, you're not coming to the fuck. You're not coming to the hospital." Yeah, and you were in Manhattan. Yeah, I was in Brooklyn. You were in Brooklyn. Yeah, so I self quarantined myself because originally I was at the restaurant, and then when I started feeling like, eh, I was like, "Let me stay away from my father." You know, I want to get him sick because he, you know, he's 60, 60 years old, and I was like, uh, you know, it's, I don't want to risk it. So I just quarantined myself for it. Took me almost two months, man. Yeah, and yeah. You're feeling better now, though, right? I feel great, but my lungs are still fucked up. Yeah. You know me. I've always been a smoker. I've been smoking since I'm like 14 years old. Yeah. And I haven't touched a cigarette because you know all this shit. It, it like really screwed me up. Yeah. I feel like a little um an asthma pump. And that's been working, you know, it kind of like opened up my lungs a little bit, but um, yeah, yeah, I'm like, shit, man. But yeah, a month and a half. That's how long it took for me to freaking uh, recover from the shit. And then I got tested and then I didn't have it anymore. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm positive that's what, what the fuck I had, bro. It was like, it, it was. Well, yeah, you were walking down the street and you're almost fainting because you couldn't breathe <laughs> unless, uh. Something else is going on. Yeah, no, no, no. I wasn't doing any other shit, I promise you. <laughs> You'd yeah. be to know if I was doing some crazy shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing better, man. Thanks, man. How you doing? Everyone's good? Yeah, everyone's good. Everyone's chill, you know. Um, what, is the, what does this guy keep asking? Hold on. Someone keeps saying, can you confirm the speculation about John Boyega being in the birthday cake movie? He's a big legend in the game. Austin, the one of the monkeys in the plan <laughs> of the apes. That's I don't know. <laughs> Bad with names, maybe. That's for Jimmy right there. You got to ask Jimmy about that. Well, we got to get Raul on blast. Where the, where the hell is Raul at? <laughs> yeah, where's Raul? You want to answer that question? Swindled? Mm. So, yeah. hey, you're, you're, you're talking about your old man. So, so where's, your, where is, where's your family from originally? My family is from yeah. uh, Sarno. Okay. It was like east of Naples. You got Salerno, and within Salerno, there's uh, a spot called Sarno, and that's where my family's from. When did they come to America? Oh, shit. I, I'm pretty sure my father got here when he was like it, between the age of 7 and 12. And then they, they, uh, they lived in Astoria, Queens. Mm. Yeah, so they were there for a while. And uh, then when Mario was born... Uh, they got an apartment uh, at 21 Spring Street, which is where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Spring Street. And then my father was uh, the pastry chef at Ferraris. You know that pastry shop on Grand Street? Mm -hmm. Mulberry and... Uh, yeah, and of course. Yeah, so... No shit. 
guy over there. And then him and Alfred Lepore got Bellatos in 1990, I want to say. Mm. Yeah. And uh, we've had it ever since. Damn, that's a while, huh? Yeah, it's a long time, man. I got, holy shit, how many years do I have in the business now? It's got to be like 13, 13, 14 years in the business now. So they that they got in 1990. Is that is that when you were born? How old are you, Emilio? No, I was born in 87. 87. Yeah, August 19. Yeah. yeah, no shit. Yeah, Mario's well, 21st. And he's 85, and then Anthony is, uh, fuck. Anthony's uh, 90, 91, August 14th. Hmm. 14th, 91. So, you know, you took after your old man where you're a hell of a cook, I know, because I spent so many nights over there late night while you're in the kitchen whipping shit up. <laughs> um, but what what about the artist side of you? Was was your old man or or your ma or your grandpa anybody in in theater or acting or musicians or any sort of entertainment? No, not I mean not that I know of. Uh, everyone on my father's side of the family, um, they were all in carpentry, you know, like bricklayers, uh, metal workers. Uh, my father's the only one out of them that was like a legit chef and owned a restaurant. <laughs> And then all the all the women, they were all cooks. Hmm. Yeah, all my aunts know how to cook. How did how did your old man get into cooking? Uh, he would he loved it because of my grandmother. That's what he told me. It was all for my grandmother. So she was like obsessed with, you know, doing the pasta the right way and using the right tomato sauce. <laughs> and you know, I guess him being around it all the time, he. He developed like a passion and an obsession with food. That's yeah. the only thing he knows how to do. You know, hey, just, uh, oh. Raul. Raul is asking who. <laughs> you see Raul's question? No, I didn't see it. He said, "Who's oh, who's better?" And a woman? <laughs> oh shit! I don't know, man. That's a tough one. I might. I gotta shut my fucking mouth with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta You're shut the... my mouth with that one. Yeah, yeah. God bless the grandmas, Emiliano says. Yeah, goddamn straight, man. <laughs> Yo, so yeah. what's up? Tell me about Obama coming to the restaurant. Oh, all right. Um, you know, it was kind of like um, last minute type of thing. Uh, I get a phone call, and then they say, we need reservations. I say, I don't take reservations. They say, oh, we have, you know, someone important that we want to bring by, but we can't tell you who it is. So I said, if you can't tell me who it is, then <laughs> you're not going to fucking sit down. Like, you can't just come in here and expect to sit down just because you're telling me that somebody important's coming by. Like, I don't even give a fuck that they said that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to reserve a table for them. And then they're saying, oh, where the exits and the door, oh, I need to talk to the manager. And I'm, I'm like, yo, you're talking to one of, the, one of the owners. What's up? And they were like, oh, well, you know, we have Barack Obama coming by. And then they were talking about shutting down the whole restaurant, the whole back room. <laughs> I said, listen, unless you're going to pay for it, the back room isn't being fucking shut. <laughs> go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. It is what it is. But we ended up making a deal with them. And um, so the deal was I would only let people back there who I knew. So for me, that's easy because you know the restaurant. When when you see me at the restaurant, I'd say about 80% of the people that are in there, I fucking know. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me. I trust everybody. I walk over to them. And what I did was I told them, like, listen, I have Obama coming by. I respect you. Don't make me kick you the fuck out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? gonna come by don't say anything to him unless he fucking talks to you just sit there eat your food don't fucking pick up your phone or anything like that so i made a deal with them that that that's what i would do but they they had uh they locked down the whole entire fucking block secret service yeah the whole entire block and the restaurant the, the restaurant was locked down too so it's like every exit inside the restaurant where the windows were they had guards over there and then you know Think of like a block as obviously like it's a block. So yeah. they have 
you know, a guy on each corner and the guy on the middle of each block. They lock down the oh, whole entire uh, thing. Yeah. And that, that's a fucking, that's a busy ass street. Yeah, it's super busy. But you know what? When people see like the barricades and all that shit, they're like, oh, fuck, who's over there? It's got to be Obama. Like yeah, they wouldn't yeah. do that, you know? Because I think he, first time he came to the neighborhood like that, he didn't come to a lot. He came to Estella. And I had people fucking hit me up like crazy, like, oh my God, you got Obama at your place. I'm like, no, he's actually not at my place. He's a oh fucking. Oh my God. <laughs> How did he hear about the place, you know? What was that? You know how he heard about the place? Did they tell you? Um, no, they didn't tell me, but um, I did hang out with his uh, his daughter a couple of times. We have a lot of mutual friends, uh, Malia, mm -hmm. and uh, so I don't know. Maybe it could have been one of one of those things, you know. Oh, his uh, his wife actually came um, prior to him coming. Oh, got you. Yeah, she came prior to him coming. Yeah, that's right. I forget. I forgot about that. Well, yeah, once yeah. you go there, once you go there, you got to go back again and again and again. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like, you know what I like to do? I like to keep it like a, like a chill, like at home vibe. It's like you do movies, you do this, you're an actor, you're a singer. I don't give a fuck what you do. Are you cool? Can you hang out? Can you be respectful of everybody in here? Yeah. Because I don't like that shit. When people pull out their phones, I don't give a fuck who it is. I'm like, get the fuck up and get the fuck out. Yeah. Paris, but but I'm hoping now, you know, people understand that that's what the place is all about. Just enjoy where you are. Don't pull out your phone. Just enjoy where the fuck you are. That's it. Very yeah. simple. Of course. You know, because there has been times where I'm just like, yo, get the fuck fuck out right now. And I, I like pick up the fucking chair. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's so crazy, but yeah. Everyone to be comfortable. That's it. Everybody seems pretty respectful there, you know? Yeah. No, the guys, think? guys have been, been with my family for over, over 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. What, are some, over... what are some other, some other like old school authentic spots that, that you fuck with in the city? Uh, for me, Frankie, Frankie Prisonzano, I love him. He's the fucking best. He's got little Frankies. Little Frankies, yeah. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Uh, what is Supper? Supper, I used to go there a lot. Uh, Sauce. Uh, Peasant. Peasant was one of my favorites. Where's that at? And Frank, Frank sold that, if I'm not mistaken. The last time I spoke to him, he told me he was going to sell it. But that's on Elizabeth Street between Prince and Spring. Hmm. Yeah, that Ooh, was uh, my... But it was only good when he was over there. If he wasn't there, the food was fucking garbage. I mean, I, I, maybe I should say that, but fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. Did you, um, did you learn to cook from your dad? Yeah, right? Yeah, uh, I I was in the construction. Um, I was with the construction company uh, before I got into the restaurant business. I specialize in acoustical work. So uh, <laughs> I was local 157, right? I started out in Juilliard. I was there for two and a half years. And then after Juilliard, I did a little work at um, Freedom Towers and then Yankee Stadium. Hmm. What yeah. did you do at Yankee Stadium? Sheetrock work. <laughs> That's like pretty that. much it. It was fucking sheetrock. It was all all soundproofing. That's all it was. No so the shit. company was called uh, Jacobson and Company. They specialize in acoustical work. So it's like when it comes to the sheetrock and you know making a room soundproof, you got to think of everything like like a room as being like this floating box. So when vibrations, like sound vibrations, they bounce off all the walls and they stay within that box. They don't travel up, mm. you know, up the second floor or, you know, to the, the rooms to the right or the left. Think of it like yeah. a floating floating box. So is that for the, for the fucking, like, 
the box seats. What was that? What was that? Where, where, are, you do, where are you doing that in Yankee Stadium for the boxes? Yeah, yeah. Those were oh. like you know, people took like the old, the old fucking, um, the old chairs like in the beginning, like when they first started, like they started disappearing like fucking clockwork over there. Yeah. <laughs> big time, man. Big time. Did you and bring I, anything back with you? And where with some guy from fucking Boston, I forget if he, if he was an electrician or or a plumber, but he tried to bury a Boston jersey in the concrete, like drop it in the concrete, and they fucking dug that shit right up, like like kind of like cursed the fucking stadium. You know <laughs> and he got pulled off the job real quick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was an electrician, if I'm not mistaken, that tried to do that. When they were pouring concrete, he dropped the jersey in there. A lot of balls on that fucking guy. <laughs> Fuck, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's Shit. funny. So, hey, yeah. Emilio, when did you get into acting? Well, I started in 2005. It's so funny because I, I um, in the beginning... I always thought, like, when I first got in the business, I always thought, like, uh, you know, extra work was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be in this movie. And then, you know, everyone would get excited. Be like, oh, shit, I can't wait to see your role. And then you're, you're waiting for it. And then you're like, what the fuck? Yo, was, what the <laughs> fuck? Why did they cut this shit out? And then you yeah. start realizing, you know, after, after, like, studying and being in the business for a long, a longer amount of time, you, you learn, you know, the – the way people talk and, you know, that extra and background work isn't really acting. You know, it's just kind of, it's kind of yeah, like, yeah. Working on, what the fuck, man? <laughs> but yeah, I started that shit in 2005 and um, I kept on trying to get my fucking SAG card. And I was like, Jesus Christ, when am I going to get this fucking? So I would always ask, like, you know, you got any um, waivers available? You know, that that was my thing. I would just jump on set. Anytime there was a casting call, I joined, um, I started off, I joined um, Comer Casting. Okay. Right? Is that here Comer. in the city? Yeah, it was in the city. And then uh, Central Casting and then Actors Access. I joined all three of those. And then what happened was, you know, I would get phone calls back and be like, oh, we can't tell you exactly uh, the location yet, but make sure you have this time frame open from this to this. And it's like, basically your whole day's fucked. You don't know when the fuck you're working. Yeah. And finally they hit you up at like <laughs> eight o'clock at night. And then you have like a 5 a.m. call time and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. And it sucks balls. But after I did that for a while and, and I got my first, I got my first half Hartley on, uh, what was it? The other woman, the other woman with Cameron Diaz. I think I that know. was my first half Hartley. Yes. Nice. Have you seen that that movie yet? No, no. What? What? When was that? Oh my god! It took me a while to get my fucking card. To be honest with you, I think I got my card in two thousand and fifteen. When I actually like joined the union was two thousand and fifteen. So I was eligible for a while. And um, what does then, that mean being eligible? Eligible that, that you have uh, enough credits to join the union, but you have to pay like an initiation fee. I think it was like 3000 if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, yeah. so you pay $3,000 and what do you mean credits? Like you had to have had been on screen or something? Yes. Like FaceTime. Okay. How many credits? Uh, three. We need a total of three. It may have changed, but what a lot of people did in the beginning was, uh, so you had SAG and AFTRA, which obviously, you know, is like two different things. So they had that merger, but you okay. pay to be in AFTRA and automatically, like when they were joining, you get your fucking SAG card and then you were good to go. That's gotcha. it. I heard about that and I didn't think it was going to happen. Then it actually happened. And then, you know, all the people that did that, you know, they got their SAG cards right off the jump. But I'm yeah. glad it worked out the way it did because, you know, I worked, I worked my ass off to get that fucking card. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that yeah. was my goal. I was like, I'm going to make sure I get this fucking card. And then I'm going to make sure I book fucking roles and get, like, 
great auditions and work with great people and create my own fucking content one day, you know, it's like yeah. always yeah. goals for myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so first waiver was, um, was the other woman. The second one was uh, Amy Schumer. The Amy Schumer show. What'd you and do? Patty hooked me up with that. So I was a pageant girl's father. I wanted to <laughs> yeah, she, oh my God, it was fucking funny as shit. This is this little Asian girl. She she was so professional. It was almost disgusting. The way she was <laughs> I'm like, yo, don't you want to fucking play and run around or something like that? Like she put her hand out like, oh, we're going to be working together. My name is so and so. Pleasure to meet you and shake my hand. And I just looked at her. I was like, the fuck? And her mother's just sitting there like. That's like Tom Cruise focus. She's going to be a star. Yeah, I was like, holy shit, man. Like me, I'm trying to fuck around with people. And, you know, this girl's like super proper and like shaking my fucking hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect eye contact, the whole nine yards. And yeah, no. So that was great. That was great. It was, it was those two. And then I forget the last... The last one was, I don't, I don't remember what the last one was. I have to look at my fucking credits. <laughs> Dude, what got you, what got you in, into, what got you into wanting to be in films and stuff? Like, I know you did like the background stuff and, and you said that, but like, is there something from when you were a kid, maybe certain movies or actors or? No, for me, it was like, I always, I always wanted to be an actor. But my thing was, when I was a kid, I was a shy fucking kid. So, but what is it about acting that you wanted to do? What what attracted you to it? Like, why I, did you want to be, you know? I just love the fact that you can, you know, like when you're, when you're a kid, you say in class, it's like, I want to be a fireman. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be this. I want to be that. Mm -hmm. and I feel like in this world... We're allowed to be whoever the fuck we want to be. We create our own fucking characters. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought was so fascinating and oh, so gosh. awesome. And I was like, wow, like one day I'm going to create my own characters and, oh, that's cool. you know, portray these characters. I could be whoever the fuck I want. And I thought that was such a cool thing. But my parents were never like, eh. you know, <laughs> yeah, it seems uh, my father's like, you got to fucking work, you stupid fuck. Like, what? <laughs> gonna be an act but and it's so funny because you used to always say <laughs> he's like always, yeah me too yeah he used to always say oh you, what do you think you're gonna be a leonardo dicaprio <laughs> and then you know we all started we, we all became friends with that motherfucker and then we're hanging out together i'm like jesus christ man because he was one of the actors that i looked up to um you know as a kid what do you you, know? you like are you friends with leo yeah, he's a cool dude. I'm friends with, uh, you know, who who actually introduced me proper to him was uh, Vinny Laresca. They were in Romeo and Juliet together. Gotcha. We're talking about, you You remember Romeo and Juliet, right? Of course, I love that film. Oh, man, that was a great one. That was so fucking great. good. But yeah, Vinny, Vinny's from Queens, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, he's gotcha. a home man. Anytime he's in New York, he's like, yo, let's go out. We we'll come by the restaurant, and then we, you know, we we'll bounce around. Let's grab a couple of. He's so chill, but you know, that's like, that's his crew. He hangs out with Leo and all those fucking guys. <laughs> we're gonna meet Leo at One Oak. Yeah, we're yeah. Go to Avenue. And it's like yeah. And then we're gonna go to your place. Social East. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like oh, we go to Bellados. After that, we go to Social East. And then we go to Up and Down. And then after Up and Down, let's say what's up to Vinny. Uh, not Vinny, a uh, fucking Richie, Akiva. Yeah, okay, uh, what, so. Let well, let's talk about that. Okay, so in New York, it's a Friday night. It's one of those nights. Where do you start? Where do I start? Yeah, where does where does a night like that start? I, I I'm I'm I know the trajectory of how that goes and even where it ends. I know a few different ways, but I want to hear it from you, and I want people to hear it. Well, for me, for me, it was always uh, I would start off at the restaurant, and I would tell whoever was down going out with me you know, for that night, and they really wanted to fucking party. If they were from out of town or whatever the fuck, I'd say, come by the restaurant. We'll have a couple of drinks here. And then afterwards, uh, we go to uh, public. Okay. Stop by public. 
The hotel? Yeah, public hotel. And then after public hotel, we would drop by um, Paul's Baby Grand. Okay. And then after Baby Grand. So you're all downtown. You're staying downtown. Yeah, I stay downtown. I never like the only time I go to like One Oak and up and down and all that shit is when I have friends from LA. They love that shit. <laughs> Whenever they come visit New York, they're like, dude, we gotta go to fucking One Oak. Let's go to fuck <laughs> up and down. Let's go to now, you know, that new fucking spot. What the hell is it called? <laughs> right up the street from uh, Webster Hall. Little sister. Wow. I don't know. I haven't been there. Poor little sister. <laughs> You know, it's a, it's that whole fucking group, man. But I mean, for me, it's like my favorite thing to do was go end at Cabin Down Below. You remember Cabin? Of course. Of course, I remember Cabin, man. Fuck yeah, man. I, like I used cabin. to fucking. Live. Sammy used to look at me and be like, "What the fuck are you? You fucking here again? What the fuck is the matter with you? Don't you have a fucking life?" I'm like, "Yeah, my life is at the restaurant, and I come over here to get fucking." You know, have a couple of drinks and you know, kind of forget about my whole entire day. And then, and then, where do you? And then, what about late, 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 late? Oh shit! I used to get in trouble for that shit back in the day. Like I, I would do uh, late nights at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Buddy, by the fucking restaurant, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm opening up the restaurant. Let's go." We bring like 15, 20 people back then, just fucking close up the whole front. We'd hang out in the back, hang out low key. I mean, it was a good time, man. Really yeah, good man, time. I, I've been there late night before. It's been great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's something, something you don't see often. Everyone's like, oh, shit. Like, wait, how are we here right now? What the hell is going on? This is real. <laughs> You're like, yeah, fuck yeah, enjoy you. You want to drink? So, so Emilio, so I, I know, you know, you've been, you've been working your way up, you know, working actor, um, you know, we put you in our film, you killed it, you killed it, you're a great actor, you really are, you're good, you have a good presence on, on screen, you take direction well, you're, you know, you're, you're open to all sorts of shit, like I, like, like I said, you know, like we said earlier, you showed up and you were just going to be the cook, sure, you're going to be, uh, the cook, and then you ended up doing stunts and like all sorts of shit, you know? So, so, you know, you've been moving up, moving up, moving up. Um, do you got anything coming up now or, or what do you want to do next? Like, what's the vibe? I know you've done like pilot season and stuff like that in Los Angeles, but what, you know, what's, what's your, uh, what's your, what do you see in the distance? In the future for me, it's like, I'm, I'm, um, I'm in the process of writing something right now, actually. So that that's what I'm, I've been trying to use my time, you know, all my free time trying to write. You know, okay. just, you know, it's just a film about father son relationship, being in the restaurant business. You know, my personal experience. So it's basically my life experience growing up as a kid and having a father in the, uh, in the restaurant industry. So that, that's what, that's what I'm working on right now. And I think it's going to be great. I just gotta, you know, I, I gotta fucking finish it. You know how it is. It's like writing my first script, you know, I have everything outlined and then trying to figure out how to structure everything, you know, like, um, you know, how it's, uh, what the hell is the name of that fucking, um, that application? Oh my God! The shit that you write scripts with. Uh, oh, final, final draft or something? Final draft, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a little fucking confusing, man. So I've been yeah. using other scripts and and trying to use that as like a guideline of like, all right, this is what I should do, and blah 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 blah, and like using it, um, you know, kind of to help me. But we'll yeah. see what happens. we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna get it done though for sure. I know you will. Yeah, and then we'll see what's up. <laughs> That's cool. So, so the acting took you into writing about what you know. Yeah, exactly. Because you know what I realized all these years being in the in the business, you know, it's like, but not not like, it's not like I'm working steadily in this yeah. audition, 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 and then maybe 
out of 50 auditions, you land one. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Of course. It, 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 but I figured it's better off you do it on your own because nobody else is going to help you. So, you know, it's like that saying, you, you could bring a horse to water, but you can't force the horse to drink the water. Of course. So me, I'm thinking it's like that. That's like me. I'm thinking that just because I'm friends with, like, let's say you or uh, another person that it's like, oh, they're just going to fucking throw me in the film, you know? But it yeah. doesn't work like that. Well, you know, you it got... does with me. It does with me. I did. Oh, yeah. And, I'm going, You're my and, home. We, and, we, and we wrote you into the next one because you did so good in the last one. So me and Raul were like, fuck it, bro. We got to put him. Where should we put him? And we, you, were, you, were, you were one of the first people guaranteed in there, you know? But that's how Thank you do it. You know, you, you work with people and you go, all right, who do we know for sure we can use again for this, this idea? And you were yeah, and I feel like it's like a trust thing, too, because if you're working on a project, you want to make sure that this person is going to show up all the time. You want to make they're sure good. they're going to bring, actually bring something to the table and be an asset. To, to what you got going, mm -hmm. you know? So once I start writing my shit, I want all my friends to be fucking part of it. I'm, I'm sure you could find a spot for everybody, you know? Yeah. I know it's it's tough sometimes because then once you start doing shit like that, it's like, yo, yo, don't forget about me. And then you got everyone coming out of the woodworks trying to get a fucking spot on the film, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it gets a little fucking crazy, but... That's all right, though, man. That's that's a that's a luxury. Mm. You know, I know the days all too well where you're like, you know, I just need anybody. You know, any anyone to. I just need a subject. You know, and then when yeah. you have people who want to who are fucking with you, that's it's great. You know, it's like yeah, you know the contrast. Um, so I just want to talk really quick before we end. I want to talk about Fortnite because we play Fortnite all the time together. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the best over here i haven't been on because you know the fucking service over here fucking sucks i don't know how i look right now i don't know if i'm like all pixelated no, yeah. see fuck. but um what's it called it's been an issue with like you know good wi-fi and and, and the nice connection but that shit's been helping me out big time and my fucking fiance hates my guts for playing all the fuck time but i mean it is what it is Sorry, tell her I said sorry. <laughs> Can she hear me? Yeah, she's sorry. in the back just looking at me like, oh, yeah, she's like, oh, fuck this guy. <laughs> so, what are you, two years old? You still f playing fucking video games? I'm like, shut <laughs> up. You have no idea what's going on right now. Man, we were on, hey, we were on fucking set, and this guy, right before they cut, right before they yelled action, you're fucking playing Fortnite on your phone and getting wins and getting yeah. wins. And somebody, somebody said to me, they're like, I think someone tried to rat or something. I think someone was like was playing video games. I'm like, that's encouraged. Any motherfucker that wants to play Fortnite right now, pull your phone out, pull your PlayStation out, plug it in. Like, Let's no, go. My shit. I know my character. I know what I got to do on set. Like, yeah. get the fuck. <laughs> that's funny. Oh my god. Yeah, I think Raul Raul caught me with that shit. I don't. He wasn't the one that ratted. He was just like, yo, yo, how you doing, man? You doing good? Yeah. <laughs> I got some great, we took, some people took some great photos of you playing, getting some wins. But yeah, yeah we, it's like, yo, Emilio on set. <laughs> I'm, fucking, I'm sitting there with the fucking phone in my head playing Fortnite. But I love it. I'm telling you, I bought that fucking Xbox and I think, I think it was a big waste of money. Really? Dude, I can't, I can't fucking get down with the, the controls. Yeah. The pain in the ass. You're so used to the fucking the phone. Yeah, the phone. I'm like, I kill it on the phone, man. Building and all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Gunkel. Emiliano's on here. He plays with us. He's Uncle Gunkel. What's yours? Um, is it... What's your your name on it? Mine? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's your name, name, right? Uh, yeah, name? I do that with all my shit. Even Call of Duty, which I haven't been on in a while. But Call of Duty, same shit. <laughs> this is my name. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh... Way to be mysterious. I'm like, what What the fuck am I trying to hide, bro? It's my fucking name. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> shit, that's funny. <laughs> I'm Critter Life on that shit. Um, <laughs> you got the Critter Life going. Yo, have you noticed that it's gotten really, it's gotten really hard. Like the last, like five days. 
it's really hard to get a win. Well, yeah. No, I think they, they're fucking uh, tweaking those bots and shit. Oh. You know, that's who I've been getting killed by. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Why is this happening right now? It just really just happened. Like, this computer beat my ass. <laughs> but, all right, man. yo, when do you get back to New York? Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, but I can't stay in the fucking South anymore. I'm just, yeah, you know, I'm taking a break because I've been driving so much. It, it took 22 hours to go uh, to Oklahoma, right? So I had to take two stops. I stopped off in Knoxville. And then I was with uh, Rachel's family in Oklahoma, right? And then we spent like, uh, what did we spend, babe? Like a week and a half over there? We spent like a week and a half with, with her family, which was great. You know, her parents are fucking awesome. We like barbecuing. We, we went to the driving range. You know, I was trying to get my golf on, which I fucking suck balls. But, you know, maybe one day I'll figure it out. <laughs> And uh, then after that, we went to go visit, uh, you know, Savannah? Savannah Engel? No, I don't think so. Uh, her family's from uh, Mississippi, uh, like the Delta, Mississippi, Delta, Mississippi. So we went over there, and she heard I was in the South. She was like, you got to come, come visit my family, this, this, and that. So we made a stop over there, and her parents were fucking awesome, man. Holy shit. Talk about Southern hospitality. Hey, what were the were, what are those Southerners all like? You sound funny. No, I didn't get any of that. Surprisingly, <laughs> really? I didn't get any of it. Maybe it was because you know it's like I love the South, and they they were all just being respectful and shit. Mm. I don't know, but nobody busts my balls with that shit. Um, so I took her her family and friends one night, and um, yeah, we were just we went out. Um, on the Mississippi River, we were like bouncing all over the fucking place, and it was it was just beautiful, man. The scenery was amazing, and then I, I had to leave because you know the restaurant's not doing well right now, so I got to do a little damage control when I get back and and you know figure some things out and just alter the menu a little bit. And Are you guys delivering right now? No, we're not. Just pick up. Pick up only. But when I get back, you know, I think I'm going to – I listen, if I got to fucking deliver the food myself, I'll fucking do it myself. You know? Yeah, what are you gonna, of course. You gotta I'll do help. It. I'll help. Pick me up. Yeah, I, I got, got you. A car. I got a car here. Dude, you got free food for life, bro. I got a car here, man. <laughs> I'll mm. do it. Yeah, so right now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in Kentucky – I'm just taking it easy, and then uh, the second it clears up, I'm going to start driving again and hopefully get, get to New York very soon because I think I have an additional – let me see. What is it? Uh, 10 hours? Yeah, an additional 10 hours to drive, and then I'll be, like, in Brooklyn. Okay. Then we could link in social distance, you know, like yeah. six feet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, man. Hey, I can't wait to see you again. And and thanks for coming and chatting and shit. Oh, man. Thank you for having me, man. And thank yeah. you for having me be a part of the film. I, I you know, I really appreciate it. And I think of it's going to be. We're going to work together for a long time. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I look forward to that shit. Absolutely. I'll let you read the script once I'm done with it. Absolutely. You give... Me, you and Raul. Me, you and Raul. He feels the same as me. About you. Yeah, sure. As an actor. Thank you, yeah. brother. I yeah. appreciate it. Of course. And and anybody watching, if you're in New York, go support Emilio's Bellato on Houston. Yeah, be there tomorrow. Yeah, man. Oh, so drop by if you want. Just, you know, knock on the window and I'll fucking, I'll wave and I'll get your food and fucking bring it out if you want. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll walk over tomorrow. Yeah, let me know, bro. Yeah, all right. I'll be around all for right. sure. All right, cool. All right, man. I love right, you, brother. Man. Thank love you so you much. I'll see you soon. Squad up tonight. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. All right. Peace. Later.